Hello, my name is Ivana Djeletovic. I'm a third year gastroenterology fellow at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. Today, I will be discussing our study entitled Impact of Fentanyl in Lieu of Mepiridine Upon Endoscopy Unit Efficiency, a Prospective Comparative Study in Patients Undergoing EGDs that was published in Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. I would first like to explain why we initiated our quality improvement project. Improving the delivery of endoscopy services will be necessary as our healthcare system evolves to enable us to continue to offer the latest technologic advances as part of high value healthcare. One approach to improving endoscopy service is to improve endoscopy unit efficiency. Dr. X and colleagues previously calculated endoscopy unit efficiency as volume of endoscopies performed per unit of time. We defined a more narrow concept of sedation-dependent endoscopy unit efficiency as the combination of induction to intubation time with intubation to extubation time, excluding the time of extubation to next patient induction. We intentionally excluded time of extubation to next patient induction because this time was not influenced by sedation and might incorporate bias related to our endoscopy unit practices. Specifically, we calculated sedation-dependent endoscopy unit efficiency as 60 minutes divided by induction to intubation time plus intubation to extubation time. Sedation studies published to date have shown that fentanyl, which has faster onset and shorter duration of action in comparison to meperidine, has been associated with quicker recovery time and therefore shorter total procedure time for both EGD and colonoscopy. These studies, however, have not evaluated other individual components of total procedure time and its effect on endoscopy unit efficiency. The primary goal of our quality improvement project was to determine if the use of fentanyl with midazolam as agents for moderate sedation in EGD are associated with improved sedation-dependent endoscopy unit efficiency when compared to mepiridine with midazolam. The secondary aim of our project was to investigate each of the components of the total procedure time separately. We performed a non-randomized prospective quality improvement study between November 1, 2008 and November 1, 2010 at our Academic Tertiary Parole Center. All consecutive unselected adults who underwent routine outpatient EGDs by one of the five experienced endoscopists were included in the study. In order to maintain application to ordinary clinical practice, we had no exclusion criteria. We used meperidine with midazolam for the first study interval from November 1, 2008 to November 1, 2009, and fentanyl with midazolam for the second study interval from November 1, 2009 to November 1, 2010. Induction began when the first dose of IV sedation was given with either midazolam or an opioid. Procedure times were recorded per usual practice from insertion to withdrawal of the endoscope. The recovery time ended when the recovery nurse deemed the patient ready for discharge home based upon assessment of our standard endoscopy suite criteria. Data collection included demographics, medication doses, sedation-related cardiopulmonary complications, patient's tolerance, procedure completed as intended, and total procedure time with its components including induction to intubation, intubation to extubation, and extubation to discharge. We calculated dosage equivalency conversion between fentanyl and meperidine by using a standard ratio in which one milligram of meperidine equals 1.33 micrograms of fentanyl. The total of 7,262 routine outpatient EGD procedures were performed at our endoscopy unit during the study period. Out of these, 1,963 EGDs, equaling 27%, were performed by one of five experienced physicians participating in the project. 1,344 patients were in the meperidine group, and 619 patients were in the fentanyl group. When we compare the two groups, there were no statistically significant differences with respect to age, gender, BMI, ASA classification, procedure tolerance, and completion of procedure as intended. Based on the dosage equivalency conversion, there were no statistically significant difference between the pyridine and fentanyl doses given. In addition, there were no cases of sedation-related cardiopulmonary complications or requirement for reversal agent use. 
This is the first quality improvement project that assessed sedation-dependent endoscopy unit efficiency by comparing the use of mepiridine with fentanyl for patients undergoing routine outpatient EGDs. We found that the fentanyl group was associated with a 10-minute reduction in the total procedure time. This significantly shorter duration was consistent across all its different components, but mainly in the induction to intubation time, which was six minutes shorter. The sedation-dependent endoscopy unit efficiency was 3.2 procedures per hour for the meperidine group and 3.9 procedures per hour for the fentanyl group, which was statistically significant. This would translate into potentially seven additional EGDs per endoscopist per day. Our results suggest that if extubation to next patient induction component of room turnover time remains constant, the use of fentanyl could be associated with increased endoscopy unit efficiency of 22%. The main limitation of our project was the lack of randomization, and we do believe that a randomized controlled trial would be valuable to validate and generalize our findings. In conclusion, the use of fentanyl in place of mepiridine for moderate sedation during EGDs is associated with 22% improvement in endoscopy unit efficiency without affecting patient's tolerance or a successful completion of the procedure. We recommend that endoscopists who customarily use mepiridine for moderate sedation should consider switching to fentanyl for EGD procedures. Currently, we're doing another quality improvement project which is evaluating if this benefit holds true for colonoscopy procedures as well. We're hopeful that this will provide additional useful information and look forward to reporting that data in the near future. I would like to thank the editors of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy for allowing us the opportunity to share our clinical experience with others in the gastroenterology community on this important topic. Thank you.